We are on day four of the trigonometry unit, and today we are looking at sine law for obtuse triangles. A couple examples and a bit of application. Just a reminder on the sine law that, you know, if we're looking for an angle, you choose any two of these with the sine of the angle on top. If you're looking for a side length, do it with the side of the triangle on the top. Now moving on to the first example. Solve for the side length for the length of side B to the nearest meter. So here is side B. If we label our triangle, we have side C over here, and down here would be side A. We know the angle across from A and A, so we will use that one to help us solve with B because we do know the angle. And that fits into our sine law rule that we must know the angle in the side opposite it and another angle in a triangle in order to use sine law. And the other case is if we know two sides around and at least one of those sides is across from an angle we know. So B over sine B, remember capitals for angles, lowercase for sides, is A over sine A. And then I fill in some numbers, B over sine 135 equals 15 over sine 22. I punch those in my calculator, I get 0 0.7071 equals 15 over 0 0.3746. I rearrange this equation and I get B is 15 times 0 0.7071 all over 0 0.3746. I do that in my calculator, and I end up with the answer B equals to 28.3. But the question had asked it to be solved to the nearest meter, so I round that to the nearest whole number. 3 causes the 8 to stay the same and I get side B equal to 28 meters. As you can see, there's no real difference in using the sine law when looking for the length of a side in an obtuse triangle or an acute triangle. This example here will highlight the special case of an obtuse triangle. We are asked to solve for the size of angle P to the nearest degree. Well, angle P is right here. Remember, this is side P. And we have over here side Q. And this would be side R, just to refresh our, our, our labeling. So we get sine P over P equals sine Q over Q. We quickly fill in what we know, sine P over 36 equals sine 38 over 24 sine p over 36 equals 0 0.615. Now it would be 5, 6, and the 6 would get rounded up to a 7 over 24. And I'll just skip to the sine p where I bring the 36 up and multiply it, equals 0 0.9236. Now we know we're in good shape because the sine of any angle cannot exceed 1. So if our number is less than 1, we have not made a mistake. And finally, to solve this, we put P, we bring the sine over, we make it the inverse sine. Now, we solve that and we get angle P equal to 67 degrees. But wait a minute, if I look at my triangle, clearly this is greater than 90. So 67 doesn't work. Well, if you remember from the yesterday's lesson on two angles, that the sine is positive whether it is above 90, an obtuse angle between 90 and 180, or an acute angle. So what we have to do is we have to find the supplementary angle. So angle P is really equal to 180 minus 67. P is equal to 
113. And a good check with that, 113, that makes more sense for a picture. We know it's obtuse from our picture. A good check is to put sine 113 into your calculator. You will end up getting the 0.9236 again. Be careful on those. Make sure you know which angle you're looking for. If it's supposed to be obtuse, you need to use the supplementary angle formula with sine in particular. <clears throat> and finally, we have a little application question. A student is building a project and should say needs to cut out. Let's fix that quickly. To cut out a triangular shape from some cardboard. Solve for all the angles and the length of each side of the triangle. Well, we already know two angles here. We have 12 and 123, so we can find this angle by going 180 minus the other two, because we know all angles in a triangle must add up to 180, and we get this angle here, angle R, equal to 45. Again, that came from that. So here we have side T, here we have side R, and here we have side little s. So we set up to solve. I'm going to look for side T first, now that we know all the angles. So I'm going to say little t equals sine t. And I'm going to use s, angle s and side s because I know both of those. And I get t over sine 12 equals 0 0.38 over sine 1, 2, 3. I put this through my calculator and I solve it and I get t equal to 0 0.09 meters. I'll repeat that procedure when looking for angle r. I would say r over sine r. You can see in this example I chose not to show my work. I think at this point you all have a good idea of what you're doing equals s over sine big S. So I get R over sine 45 equals 0.38 over sine 123. Just fix that. I wrote an S by accident. And again, I multiply the sine 45 by the point 0.38, divide by the answer to sine 123, and I get r equal to 0 0.32 meters. Nice and straightforward with the sine law in oblique triangles. Just the only thing to be careful of is, again, in example two, where you have the obtuse angle, and you have to remember to subtract 180, or subtract your angle from 180 to get that angle. And you only do it when you have, when you're on the oblique angle. If I was on, looking for either the other two, I would not need to do it. So you need to know where you're on the, are in the triangle, and be very careful. I can't stress that enough. Good luck with your work.